On the weekend of September 9th and 10th, 2010, the Pennsylvania Labor History Society held its annual conference in Altoona and the little neighboring town of Lilly, Pennsylvania. Jim Saloni, president of the Lilly Washington Historical Society, welcomed members of the PLHS to a luncheon served at the American Legion Post 628 in Lilly. In addition to the luncheon and presentation, Mr. Saloni gave a guided tour of the many memorial sites scattered throughout the town itself. What follows is an abbreviated video account of the events of that day. Uh, my name is Jim Saloni. I'm president of the Lilly Washington Historical Society, and we certainly want to extend a warm welcome to the Pennsylvania Labor History Society. Uh, and this is their luncheon. We're sort of hosting the hosts or uh, whatever. But uh, this, just a, f a few words, and we'll get the general rundown. We have a little introduction, the uh, prayer and the salute. And this whole association with the Labor uh, History Society has been probably the most singularly uh, positive thing of the experience. And just a, a little history on the involvement. And again, the members are certainly aware of what you have done in the past as far as traveling to various places to isolate uh, labor history movement in Pennsylvania and then do the research and get the monument and have the ceremony and really memorialize the whole event. My understanding is that in 09, the society decided that something should be done in this area and singled out the Ku Klux Klan riot that had occurred here in 25 because of its involvement with labor and had the intent of coming in and doing the research and doing the memorial. And um, then when the initial foray into the community, they discovered that we had done the monument and they were back, they being the collective group, back two or three times before we knew they had been there. They found out what else we had done as far as the monuments were concerned and then we arranged a meeting with myself and Jack Barlick and Melvin Fees and Rosemary came along and Charlie and Nick. And we were just so overwhelmed because we had done a lot of work and we knew we had done good work but, uh, and we had gotten some other awards but it had always been us seeking them and doing the forms and uh, the whole pursuit but to have people come to us and just so effusive telling us, you know, and by us I do mean the whole town and the society, what we had done and who it was coming from, these people that had been doing this for, for decades, really put it in perspective. And then just everything flowed from that. Uh, where they got us in contact with Mike here, the last of the Renaissance men who uh, has the printing as well as the vocal and he's going to do our military history book and the reprint of our history book all at unbelievable uh, cost compared to what we originally did. We made contact with Millie down, down here that got us in contact with uh, the Ku Klux Klan history and we got original documents uh, from, from that affair, and just on and on. And then this journal came out in the spring that, that featured the monuments in town. We had this great exposure and certainly praiseworthy, and at the same time, it was one of the things that encouraged me to go for another award, which is a national award that we'll be receiving in September from the American Association of Local and State Histories. Um, we had received an award for the history book from the uh, Federa Pennsylvania Federation of Museums and Historical Societies, and they encouraged us to apply to this with the book. 
we were turned down not because the book wasn't good but because it didn't have an index and then there was another award available and that was community involvement and because of what the society the labor history society had told us we pursued that and we won the national award and it was interesting in a self-promoting manner when the announcement came out it said this is the most prestigious award that's given in the u.s um, Part of that award um, was that we submitted, we had to submit documentation of what we had done. And of course, it just was in timely that we submitted the journal that had published and all this noteworthy material. Then there were three criteria for that award. And the first criteria was that you had to show how your project, which was everything we had done between 2002 and 2008, had um, been realized in the mission statement and of course ours was exact and that came through. Uh, the second as part of the budget process you had to tell them how many donated volunteer hours were involved and of course I put that in the publication and this is everyone in the community involved but we had 40,000 hours of contributed service, volunteer <laughs> service. And then the last criteria was that no matter how fine and well the project was in itself, it had to serve as a model for others to do that. And we had to add two letters of testamentary, and of course Charlie was on the spot and we would have not known him beforehand, but gave us this glowing report in the perspective that only he could give. And then we had Richard Burkhardt, who will be here later, uh, who is the director, the president of the Johnstown Heritage Association do that. But all that ties together and it all keys in so many ways on our involvement with the labor history group. And so I'd like our group to give them a big hand because we really appreciate it. If everyone would stand, we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like the Reverend Falco to. Well, that's okay. If you started sitting, go ahead. That's all right. Go ahead, sit down. After all, the Lord uh, didn't ask the disciples to stand. Uh, well, effusive is the absolute right word to use about our enthusiasm of having found you, all of you here in this wonderful community of Lily and your historical society. I just, I have to, I have to tell you that everywhere I go, I say, if you haven't been to Lily, you've got to get there and see what this community has done to celebrate their heritage, their history, their working class roots, their roots in the mining community and the railroad industry, and being proud of it and being able to share with that, and, and the volunteer efforts, as well as recognize the role of women and workers and men and volunteers and military dogs and <laughs> and I just I and the military service of, of your community I mean you have no idea I have traveled extensively throughout the United States on a more limited basis in Europe and you are unique I will tell you and so I wish that our Pennsylvania Labor History Society applaud you and your efforts and your work and your leadership and your model and may we replicate it everywhere. <laughs>